Hi guys, so we're here talking about 20.3. Um, don't get confused between the two versions. We're talking about the scaled version right now. If you're RX, intermediate, veteran or teens, don't watch this. Go back, find that version of the workout, okay? So there's three AMRAPs again, performed on a 12 minute rolling clock. Uh, you need to be judged. If you are a scaled athlete, you don't have to submit a video if you have a judge and they can verify your score. If you don't have a judge, you can film it, we'll watch the video, that's fine. So the first part, again, scored separately, is 200 foot shuttle run into 15 kettlebell swings. Um, pretty similar setup to the RX versions, but the movements are slightly different. Is there any way we'd change how we attack this one? I don't think so, no. Um, the kettlebell swings, hang on for the full 15, make sure you get your, your head all the way through, fully locked out, and just run for your life on them. It is only a 25 foot run each day, uh, for one of them reps, just run really hard there, pick up the kettlebell and go. Um, you don't need to worry about, for me anyway, you know, splitting up them, them reps with the kettlebells, let's go really hard, let's get a really good score on that one. Done. Yeah, I, w I would probably second that. I think, very worst case scenario, maybe think an eight and a seven, possibly with your kettlebell swings, but very, very minimal rest between. Yeah. It's a, it's a fast AMRAP, it's supposed to be fast, it's supposed to be something you can move through pretty efficiently. So. How many um, rounds do you think for that? I think maybe three. Yeah, I would, upwards, say, I would say. Upwards of three, potentially. Yeah. Three rounds would be a really good score on that. And again, make sure your judge is aware of the movement standards on the kettlebell. We filmed all them in the movement standards video um, and we don't want to know about sloppy reps. So make sure your judge is only giving you reps that we are looking for. We've locked our arms, the kettlebell facing upwards. And if you're submitting a video, we will be watching them. We will be judging them ourselves. So hold yourself to the highest standard every single time. Um, going into part B, um, we've got a 100 foot walking lunge where the kettlebell can be held anywhere on the body and we have 10 knee raises. So this one's a little bit different. It's going to be a little bit challenging on the lunge, I think. Yeah, um, I think the lunge, I mean, just where you feel comfortable holding that kettlebell, um, front rack, as you see on your shoulder, they're probably the, the most, would you say that would be By your side there? maybe, I think. Down there, yeah. yeah. Uh, I would say maybe front rack sitting on your shoulder is probably there. going to be the most common thing you'll see. I would, I would In each thought. 25 foot, maybe switch on the other arm so one arm doesn't get yeah. gassed too much. Um, in terms of them, them uh, the knee races, you can move them through them quite quick, but just make sure that you're getting the full reps so that you, you do see a lot of people just kind of just come like this. You, they're there, clearly no reps, just make sure your, your knees are clearly breaking, power, uh, breaking the hip grease and obviously you're getting your, your heels behind the line of that bar there. Um, there's only so fast you can move through that, so it's going to be made memories on that lunge. Um, try to go and broke down the lunge if you can. Um, yeah. yeah so remember only... every five foot is one rep on that lunge as well, so it is worth really pushing into the last few seconds of that. Yeah. yeah, and I think a lot of that AMRAP is specifically going to be lunge. Mm -hmm. There isn't going to mm -hmm. be much that separates yeah. somebody doing 10 knee raises, yeah. even in a scaled competition. Yeah. So I think that 10 reps are going to be over pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Again, make sure they're deliberate, make sure yeah. you're getting your knees high enough, but you're not going to get much rest from that yeah. lunge. It's going to be yeah. quite, a, quite a leg heavy workout mm -hmm. in yeah. that particular yeah. movement. But that is, again, remember, a separate score for part B. It doesn't get added to part A. It's completely separate on the leaderboard as its own workout. But you have to perform these workouts one after the other after the other. Like we said to the RX guys, it's a 12 minute rolling clock. You cannot mix and match. You can't on a Tuesday do the first part, on Thursday do the next part. They have to be done consecutively. So make sure that you adhere to that, guys. Um, part C, the final part of your qualifiers is a 50 foot overhead kettlebell walk with five pull-ups. So for this one, this is gonna challenge you. We, ha we have to try and separate the field a little bit and I think pull-ups is probably gonna be where we find that separation. Yeah, um, a, a lot of guys in the skills are maybe just gonna be going singles on them pull-ups. Again, as Brett says, just be really deliberate, chin clearly above the bar. Um, if you can, you know, if, if chin up's a little bit easier for you, then of course go with that underhanded grip there. A few guys will be in the, the, the conventional pull up posi uh, position. Just hit, if you're hitting a single, just drop and go, bang, drop, hang on the bar, pull again, uh, just go singles. But we do need to challenge you, that's why we've put 10 in there. Sorry, it's a five. five. Yeah, yeah so five. five. It, it will five challenge you, but we do know that people in the scale category can perform pull ups, not everybody. Yeah. If you are struggling with pull ups, then you go harder in the first two workouts. Yeah. 
you play to your strengths. Brett's um, filmed all the movement standards to do with pull-ups and chin-ups and grips and everything like that, so just go back, have a look at them, see how it goes with that. I think as well for me, don't underestimate how heavy that kettlebell is in the walk. Mm. It is tough, it's a really tough movement. We had a couple of questions about can you run, can you, can you move a little bit faster than just a walk? Yes, my advice, don't because it's really, really difficult when that kettlebell starts to move around to try and stabilize above your head. That would be my advice on that workout. Yeah, because dropping it's gonna be costly. Yeah. You drop it or you don't make that line, it's gonna take you too much time. By the time you picked it back up, anything like that, you don't wanna be putting yourself in that position, not when pull-ups is really gonna be the separator, I think. I think that's that slight bend in your arm under fatigue, Yeah. Under normal circumstances, yes, you may be able to lock that back out. You're not going to be able to under fatigue. It's going to come down. It's going to have to be reset from the line that you've missed. Okay, um, I should have said this on all the videos about questions and that. Uh, I'll wrap this one up first. Um, so that's everything from us, guys. That's 20.3, three-part workout. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed the qualifiers. We will be announcing the finalists once submission closes and we've done all the video and scoring reviews and we'll hopefully see you guys in June at the finals.